good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are all of you doing today? Excellent. Well, I have decided I am I am going to leave Los Angeles for at least a week or so because um, I downloaded this Citizen app, which is an app that basically alerts you to any crime in your area. I just figured with everything that is going on and the way things are now, I better keep an eye on what's going on in my neighborhood. And um, I'm going to read off to you what has happened in the last 24 hours within two miles of where I live from the Citizen app, things that have been reported and that the police have had to come out for. Um, report of man brandishing a knife. Report of man throwing large objects at vehicles. That was literally a block away from where I live. Um, report of gunshots heard. Report of shots fired. Stolen pizzas at gunpoint. Things are getting wacky. And I have a friend that lives in the Phoenix area and has a big place, just lives there by himself, has a lot of room for Jada run around and said, hey, if you want to come hang out here, by all means, you're welcome to. So I think I'm going to take him up on it. Even though it's raining out today, I think I'm just going to pile everything into the car, including the Joster, and I think we're going to go there. And, um, you know, there's less congestion. I'm having a good... I mean, I mean, I'm doing okay as far as staying away from people when I go out, like I go do the vlog to get exercise. I go pick somewhere where there are no people, but actually in my neighborhood and the grocery that I go to is just swarming with people since all you can really do is go to the grocery or exercise. The streets here are just flooded with people out exercising, jogging, walking their dogs, walking kids in strollers and stuff. So he said it's less of that there. So I'm going to go and I'll do a few vlogs while I'm there as well. But I just want to kind of ride out a little bit and see how things go. All right. Hope you guys are cool with that. Hope you understand. And we're going to pile things in. Wake up, Jaw, and hit the road. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Hey, Jaw, Are you going to go to Arizona with me today or what? You don't want to go? Okay, goodbye. I'll see you when I get back. Do you want to go to Arizona? What do you think? W blink twice if you're down for Arizona. Okay. As you can tell when it rains it pours, it's been basically raining off and on for the last 24 hours. I'm looking forward to going to where it's not raining right now. It looks like we're away from all the rain. Saw quite a few accidents. When not as many people are traveling, the water was collecting a lot more and yeah, it was not fun. Live more, worry less. Easier said than done, my friend. Here's the border of California to Arizona. Welcome to Arizona. Wow, look at those tires. You can tell by all the dead bugs all over my windshield that we have made it to Arizona and we are going to vlog something today. We're going to Green Acres Cemetery to visit the grave of Eddie Guerrero. Well, we found our way to Green Acres Memorial Cemetery here in Scottsdale. And what a beautiful, serene cemetery this is. I actually remember when Eddie Guerrero passed away because I had just seen him less than a week before at a SmackDown taping when he passed away. In fact, I believe the SmackDown taping was Thursday night and he was found passed away Sunday morning. I remember when they showed a little bit of the footage from the funeral, seeing his wife and daughters walking right out here and the hearse taking him down that direction and they had one of the low riders in tribute to him out here. 
the convertible. He would always show up in the ring driving down the ramp in one of those hydraulic low riders or an old Latino heat car for what he was known for. So let's go find Eddie's final resting place. Eddie was hands down one of the most beloved wrestlers of all time, not only with the fans, but with historians and his own fellow wrestlers. Now I believe Eddie is laid to rest in this kind of gated area over here. Here's a nice family setting statue here. Very appropriate. Eddie was the ultimate family man. In fact, his family, the Guerreros, were known as the first Mexican family of wrestling. His father, Gory Guerrero, was a wrestler and a famous booker. And here's the final resting place of the great Eddie Guerrero, where he will share a plot with his wife, Vicky, who also was a wrestler. And there he is. There they are. Loving husband always together. Daddy, you are the champion of our hearts, always and forever. Our memories will never be forgotten. Matthew 25, 21. Well done, good and faithful servant. Eddie was easily one of the most loved entertainers of all time. And this started from the time he was very, very, very little. Like I said, his father was heavy in the wrestling business and in his backyard, they actually had a wrestling ring. So. Eddie was wrestling from the time that he could crawl and walk. He was spending all of his days back there. He became a pro at the age of 20, working his way all the way up the circuit. Now, he wasn't a big guy. Eddie Guerrero was only 5'8", and he wasn't as bulky as he would eventually become. So early on in the days of the business, you know, it was thought that you had to be six foot and above, 250 pounds to be a main eventer. And not many people were given a chance beyond that to be a headliner, a champion, or anything. And Eddie Guerrero was one of the people that helped change that. See, like I said, Eddie was working his way up from the very beginning. He didn't use just being Gory Guerrero's son as an in. He did all the hard independent circuit things that you could do to get your foot in the door, work your way up. And from the time he was 20, this was his goal to be the best there was, to be the best entertainer, to make people happy. And early on in his career, he ended up getting paired up with a guy named Chris Benoit. And he and Eddie would end up being teamed up together for two weeks. And Eddie would tell his wife, Vicky that he absolutely hated Chris. <laughs> He's like, this guy's the worst. And then at the end of the two weeks, they were best friends. And this pretty much continued their entire career. Eddie would help get Chris into God, turned him onto the Bible, and they ended up working their way into WCW together. When WWF at the time wasn't giving smaller guys a chance, WCW did. And the one and only WCW show that I ever saw, Eddie Guerrero was there. He was a part of that. He came in with Chris Benoit and I believe Dean Malenko. They all entered WCW together even during the whole NWO thing, they still made a name for themselves, distinguished themselves beyond all that stuff that was going on, and eventually Eddie, Chris Benoit, uh, I believe Rey Mysterio, and Chavo all went to the WWE. If they, believe it or not, they got asked to go to the WWE, and Eddie was becoming a superstar there. Unfortunately, Something that happened to a lot of wrestlers was that they incur a lot of injury working their way up and they don't want to take time off because they're all afraid that they'll lose their spot in the order. So a lot of guys would play through pain, play through injuries, wrestle through broken bones. Eddie was no different and much like a lot of those guys, Eddie developed a um, reliance upon drinking and doing drugs and Vicky even said 
he overdosed three times at their house. She said two times she took him to the hospital and they released him the next day. And she said the third time I saw him there and I had to take the kids to school and instead of calling the hospital, I just, I just let him sit there and I just prayed on the way back. I said, if this is, if this is it, if this is, this is like, just let it be now. Cause I can't take much more of this. He didn't die. He went back to work and um, incurred a DUI and the WWE released him. Now they, you know, very rarely would release somebody of his talent, but when there's a substance abuse problem, they, they had to let him go. And he had to go through rehab, work his way up through the independent circuit again. And unbeknownst to him, WWE was watching and ended up a year later giving him a contract to come back. And not too long after Eddie came back, WWE decided to split their two shows into brands. They wanted to have um, specific wrestlers only a part of Raw and certain specific wrestlers only a part of SmackDown. Eddie was sent to SmackDown and basically they needed quick results. They needed to make this show a success. And Eddie with his over the top personality was one of the reasons that it was a success. Eddie took just from being a, you know, a technically good wrestler with a really great uh, finisher, the frog splash, and he was known as like the black tiger early on, to coming up with this whole, I'm your pappy, uh, I lie, I cheat, I steal, Latino heat gimmick. And he really ran with it. And he made not only wrestling funny to watch, but he was good at it. Everything about it was entertaining. There was a full show, just him coming down to the ring. When he was in the ring wrestling people, he was the ultimate cheater. He would hit people with a chair and then put the chair in their hands and act like he was hit in front of the referee. He just always did something to draw the attention. And I remember one time watching a match and um, it was a, a three on three match and Eddie had just done a move and all of a sudden he had I mean, he just had a heart attack in the ring. You could just see his face like just go blank and he falls to the ground and you could see the camera shows all the other wrestlers as they're trying to figure out what to do. But every single wrestler they show in his eyes, they're all terrified because, I mean, it, almost, it looks like he's gonna die. And when he did eventually pass away at the, at my age, the untimely age of 38 years old, when they did a memorial tribute to him every wrestler that you saw at the tribute was crying not visibly upset water coming out of their eyes crying he affected that many people they said that uh, both behind the scenes he was a leader he was always wanting to know what was going to happen in the matches he always wanted to make them better he always was uh, talking to people through their problems chris benoit was his best friend and he helped him through a lot of his problems and eventually after eddie passed away Chris would have a very, very bad ending that I'll tell you about that a lot of people actually uh, kind of blame on the passing of Eddie. So for not being a terribly big guy, Eddie Guerrero did end up becoming tag team champions and he eventually beat Brock Lesnar in 2004 to become, he became the man. And like I said, for a guy who was 5'8", almost unheard of. He kind of helped open the door for people like Rey Mysterio and you know guys that were much smaller to get main event status against seven footers. And Eddie, unfortunately, I had just seen him at SmackDown. I believe it, like I said, I think it was a Thursday night and then they announced Sunday morning that he had passed away in his hotel room in Minneapolis. Now what's sad about all of that is that not only was he 38, but the, um, he had asked for a wake up call and he didn't answer the wake up call so the hotel staff went and tried to open the door and it was chained from the inside so they knew that he was inside. So they called his nephew, who was also a wrestler, Chavo Guerrero Jr. and said, hey, we think there's a problem with your uncle. And so Chavo came, they broke into the room and when they went in, Chavo saw Eddie in his underwear laying face down in the bathroom with his toothbrush and he, helped turn him over and he said he was still alive. He was gurgling and then passed away in Chavo's arms. Now, when they found out that he was gone, um, the way that they told his wife Vicky was that they actually told his 
his sisters and his his family, his parents first, and they came over to Vicky's house, Eddie's house. They had just moved here to Scottsdale a month before Eddie's passing. They went and rang the doorbell and Vicky thought it was weird that someone would be ringing the doorbell and when she opened up the door, she saw the whole family there and they told her what happened. Now to this day, she's always had regret because she said that her phone rang at about 5.30 a.m. and it was Eddie and she heard it ring but she just thought, you know, I'll, I'll call him later when I wake up and never got that chance and she said the one piece of solace she's always had is knowing that Eddie made a last attempt to talk to her before he passed that he was trying to make her the last person that he talked to now after he passed away Chris Benoit took a serious turn for the worse he they said he was crying constantly for a guy who never showed any emotion Chris had also been a wrestler who had had to use pain pills and things like that and they had also used steroids and Chris had a flying headbutt that was his finishing move that a lot of people believe led to some problems that eventually led to what he would do later. But Vicky said that Chris, after Eddie passed, would come over to their house and go up and literally hug and cry like hug Eddie's pillow and lay on his side of the bed and hug his pillow and cry and her kids would come down and say Chris is crying again mom just could not let go to the point where it started affecting everything in Chris Benoit's family he was treating people differently and they said that they found that the only way they, they thought it was going to go down a really bad road the only way they could help him was they gave him a journal and said here write to Eddie and so that was for about a year what he would do is he would write letters to Eddie Guerrero in his journal and eventually Chris Benoit ended up killing himself his wife and his son and they have attributed to injuries sustained from his time wrestling these guys were best of friends I mean literally they did everything together and sometimes they say when you have trauma in your brain having something more traumatic happening will just kind of flip a switch and a lot of people believe that Eddie's passing was that now Eddie's got three daughters and two of those daughters are involved in the wrestling business and his wife was involved in the wrestling business and to my knowledge the WWE has been really good to his family I mean they really really loved Eddie and like I said, when you watch the, either like the Hall of Fame or even the tribute that they did to Eddie after they found out he had passed, every wrestler that is talking or is seen is visibly crying. And in fact, this happened in 2005 when Eddie passed. It wasn't until this following, or this past year, 2019, that Rey Mysterio Jr. came and visited the grave because he couldn't handle it up until now. Just 38 years old. Eddie Guerrero passed away in 2005 and the very next year the WWE inducted him into the World Wrestling Entertainment Hall of Fame. Being inducted by his best friends Chris Benoit, Rey Mysterio, and Chavo Guerrero Jr. also they brought up his wife and daughters and it was a really heartfelt touching ceremony and I remember this great moment where Chavo says you know it was just last year we were sitting here watching the ceremony and I was looking over at Eddie and watching that infectious laugh that he had you know you just couldn't be around the guy without laughing he was one of the funniest people and he said I just never will forget that last Wrestlemania us looking at each other laughing and if you'd have told me then that a year later that I'll be here inducting him, I just, I never would have believed it. No one saw this coming. Eddie Guerrero ended up dying of a heart, basically heart failure in his hotel room at the age of 38 years old. So I found a funny interview with Chavo Guerrero where he says he can get even begin to count how many times he was in a locker room getting ready for a taping and Eddie would be standing in there half dressed with everyone else getting dressed reading out of the Bible trying to inspire guys and just trying to motivate him because a lot of people in that locker room were 
battling with the same problems that Eddie had battled. You know, he had he had had he had been fired from the WWE for substance abuse. He had been in trouble with the law for it, and so nobody understood it more than he. And he also, and to WWE's credit, they've always been one to give second chances. Vince McMahon has always given second chances, and it's really, really great that he did with Eddie when they first fired him in 2001, bringing him back, because, like I said, what Eddie did for the business for the next couple of years and just helping to build SmackDown, it's there's nobody that could take as much credit for the glory in that as Eddie Guerrero. Even though Eddie was dedicated to being the greatest wrestler he could be, in some weird way, he was able to give 100% to being a wrestler and 100% to being a father because his wife said that whenever he wasn't on the road, they were always out going to a movie or doing something together with their daughters. And she said, just to give an example of the kind of guy Eddie was, she said she remembered one day coming out of the house and there were about 15 kids across the street and only five of them had squirt guns and Eddie got in his car went to the store and came back with four big bags of squirt guns for all the kids and the biggest one was for Eddie himself and she said he stayed out there playing with those kids for hours and she said and you'll be happy to know that he did win and that he did cheat because that was you know obviously as a wrestler that was his thing was the the charm in finding a way to cheat and to childishly act like he didn't do anything wrong Oh man, look how sad this is. This little kid looks like he was about nine years old. And it says, one smile can't change the world, but yours changed ours. So it's kind of crazy for me to think about, but yeah, my first and only WCW event was seeing Eddie Guerrero and my last WWE event that I've ever been to was seeing Eddie Guerrero. I'm not exactly sure where it's located. Eddie is buried right over here, but I read online that superstar Billy Graham, the wrestler, also has a plot near here. Just not sure where. Eddie was known as one of the most positive people on the roster. They said he was always the guy that found the bright side in everything. Let's go take a look at this nice fountain over here. Rest in peace, Edward Gory Guerrero. Rest in heaven. You are missed. All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. Thank you, Marnie Kraft, Carla Klein, Linda Valeroy, Joseph Romagano, and Diane Bauer for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you everyone for watching. And rest in peace, champ. Have a great night, everyone. Goodbye.